So, I finally picked up the fifth and final volume of Moon Knight. However, rather than do a review of it, because I stopped doing reviews of the comics um, after volume two, um, I decided, you know what, kind of like what I did when I, re when I got all the, vo the trades of uh, Donny Cates' Thor, I thought I'd talk about like why you should pick up this comic. And now that it's over, you guys can officially pick it up in, in trade, or you know, if you want to do back issues, it's only like 30 issues. So, um, this comic is one of my favorite. Like, I'm going to talk about like why you should pick up these com these volumes because I think you can still get the other four. They're re still recent. So, why should you pick up Jed McKay's Moon Knight run? It's arguably one of my been one of my favorite um, comic runs in a while. I haven't read Vengeance of Moon Knight. I'm gonna again. I'm more of a trade reader than I am a single issue reader, unless it's something like a special issue or a one shot or a or something of that nature, then I'll pick it up. Um, because even though trades are kind of expensive, they're easier to get. And also, um, I like reading the whole story rather than waiting on a cliffhanger. Anyway, so this comic, oh boy, this comic. Um, why should you read Jed McKay's Moon Knight? Well, a couple of reasons. First off, if you've been noticing, Jed McKay has kind of exploded as a writer over at Marvel. Um, he's currently writing Avengers, he'll be writing X-Men, he's also been writing a few other characters here and there, and this was basically the book that put him on the map. He had done, uh, now, granted, he had done other comics uh, in the past, but Moon, when he got a, his hands on Moon Knight, um, that's when he exploded. That's when the, uh, when the grease really hit the fire. Um, this story actually does a lot, and I do stress a lot in five volumes, and it's perfectly balanced, as all things should be. So what is this comic about? Well, this takes place after the events. This run begins after the events of the Age of Khonshu storyline in, in Jason Aaron's Avengers, where uh, Khonshu uh, convinced Mark to defeat the Avengers and bring in the Age of Khonshu, thus leading to the Avengers fighting back and Khonshu being imprisoned by the Asgardians. Um, however, rather than be sent to prison or sent to the raft, more, uh, more importantly, um, Mark Spector was allowed probation and still allowed to be a superhero, but he is given a psychologist. And it's not Leonard Sampson, that's kind of the go-to one. It's a new character called Dr. St uh, Sturman, who's a lot of fun. I really like her and Mark's back and forth um, in here. However, as Mark is, is beginning a new lease on life uh, post Khonshu and trying to move forward with this thing called the Moon with the Midnight Mission, where he's protecting people at night, which uh, which meet, leads him to run into a new character, Reese, who's been turned into a vampire. She allies with him. He also encounters other new characters, like Hunter's Moon, who is another fist of Khonshu. Um, and da his name is, is uh, Yahir... Uh, I, I can't pronounce his proper name. Yahir Badur. And Dr. Badur, also known as Hunter's Moon, considers, even though he doesn't like Mark... He's still the he still considers you're a son of Kanchu, you are my brother, even if I fucking hate you. <laughs> you think he's gonna be the main antagonist of the comic, but how that's how they build him up in the first issue is like they they te they treat him like this big villain that Mark has to encounter, but no, he actually becomes an ally throughout the first story arc and and becomes part of, like they treat him and you know Badur and Spectre. Um, become close friends and even like real brothers by the end of it i really also like that we also have tigra who shows up and there's stuff between her and mark that becomes romantic um mark's a furry who knew and it also like we also have the real antagonist of this story zodiac who when i first read the volume the first volume i did a review of that i thought zodiac was a completely new character someone reminded me that i was like no zodiac's a character that was used in Dark Rain and everyone forgot about. It was a, he was created for the Dark Rain storyline, but everyone just kind of forgot about. It. And I was like, oh shit, that's right. That is that's so Zodiac in here is kind of treated like the Joker to Mark's Batman, but it's not done like in how I didn't like it. How they were trying to make Black Pan the Eve E Wing run of Black Panther and basically make it African Batman, where it was like a M Lucius Fox stand in and a Catwoman stand in. Um, here it's like. Zodiac isn't like he's a, he is interested in Moon Knight and he wants an a, he wants an adversary. Like it's kind of cool that 
it's not like I'm doing this for chaos's sake. It's more like I'm trying to, like, Mark Spector, the reason why he's so obsessed with Moon Knight is because he considers him, like, an agent of chaos. And he's like, I want it, you're, you're holding yourself back. Like, where's the Moon Knight who cut off Bushman's face? And this is what I love about McKay's writing, is that he leaves no st stone unturned, and he knows a lot about Moon Knight lore. Like, he does far back reaching to, like, back in the 70s with Moon Knight. He also does comics that have characters that are long forgotten. Like, he does create a few new characters, like a few new villains, but they're throwaway at best. Mark's whole, I mean, McKay's whole thing with this comic is that he really loves digging into the past and pulling out these new these characters and giving some, uh, some life to them. One in particular is a villain named 8-Ball, who was this stupid-ass throwaway villain for, I think, uh, Speedball? if I'm not mistaken, and 8-Ball, either he was Nova or Spe he it doesn't matter, 8-Ball was a lame villain, and he is treated like a punching bag throughout the comic, and he keeps coming back until, like, in the story, he evolves as a character, even becoming an ally um, to Moon Knight and a member of the Midnight Mission by the end of the storyline. There's also a lot of stuff involving Mark and his personalities because mark at the moment really hates himself because how how conchu fooled him into joining up with the age of conchu and he really just wants to punish himself and there's some great there's a great issue where him jake and steven have like this back and forth um in mark's head while he's trying to fight these two new villains um and eventually Mark says, it's not because I don't want to lose my body to you. It's more like if I show Reese and Tigra, you guys, I'm afraid they're going to like them more. And I'm just going to, they're going to hate me more. And I'm like, wow, that's, that's deep. Like Mark hates himself so much that he's punishing his other personalities, not because he hates them, but because like he wants to be punished. And he's afraid that ever the people who, what little people who do like him are going to not like him after that because he's just punished himself. Also, McKay also brings up the fact that Marlene's alive and Mark has a daughter that he can't see. It's a great storyline involving Werewolf by Night, um, which is pretty neat because I think a lot of people forget that even the, yes, Moon Knight did show up in Werewolf by Night, but a lot of people forget that him, that Jack and Mark really don't like each other. They really, like, Mark, I mean, Jack, even though he is a superhero, he is considered one of the heroes, him and Mark, have legit tried to kill each other multiple times. Like Mar like Jack Russell is considered one of Moon Knight's rogues. Um, so I think a lot of people, even I forgot that. <laughs> um, but yeah. So that's what I really love about this book is that this really dig, Jed McKay really, rather than try to, uh, uh, like even, Z like I said, Zodiac isn't really a new villain. He's just a character no one gave a fuck about. And Mark, I mean, McKay just, like, dusts him off and, like, okay, you're a Moon Knight villain now. Um, which is neat. They also, the big thing of also Zodiac, while he is treated like the big overarching villain for a few, there's also a few other new, there's a few other characters, like vampires. Um, McKay has a thing for vampires, if Blood Hunt is, the upcoming Blood Hunt event isn't obvious enough. But there's also the return of Black Spectre, who is a new Black Spectre. And I feel like his inclusion in the story just kind of gets muddled a bit, but I will say it's, it's, it has a very nice conclusion. And honestly, while I do know that this comic does get a sequel, Vengeance of the Moon Knight, I really feel like you could have just ended the comic here. Like, you did, it, like, I almost feel like, because again, I haven't read Vengeance of the Moon Knight, so I can't really say, but at the same time, I'm like, how the book, how this storyline of Moon Knight ends really does feel like you could just stop. Like, you could just use these these other characters Moon Knight has in his... Like, these other characters and do a whole, like, Midnight Mission comic instead of, like, another Moon Knight book. But I get it. Mar like, I feel like that was McKay's idea, too, was to... Like, he wanted to make the Midnight Mission follow and then resurrect Mark some other point because no one stays dead in comics. Um, but I feel like that's the thing, and it is so... I would have, like, again, I would have preferred, like, rather than just do Vengeance of the Moon Knight, I would have said the Midnight Mission and focus on Reese, Tigra, 
Hunter's Moon and Eight Ball and another character who I completely forgot about, Soldier. Soldier's another great character in here. He is basically a ex Hydra agent who joins Moon Knight after he helps save his mother. So Soldier also becomes a vampire, and he and Reese have to like adjust to living as a vampire. And it's kind of cool because like they are essentially like treating it like it's it's like almost like living with diabetes for a bit it's not like oh i'm it's not like with uh, with um michael morbius or blade where it's like it's a curse and you f need to feed all the time and, you know you're an abomination and everything it's it's like them especially reese who has some great one-liners here and there reese is just she's just like it's like treat it's like being it's, it's like being diabetic like I, I it's a it sucks but like i can live with it so it's pretty cool all in all, um, go check this comic out. I cannot re recommend Jed McKay's Moon Knight enough. If this flew under your radar, go collect the volumes or the issues here on out. It's really good. I really love it. Um, there's great humor. There's great one-liners. There's great uh, use of other villains, like D-list, C-list villains who actually get a lot of uh, spots to shine. Um, there's a great... There's great story there's a great overarching storyline of mark this is basically the best way to describe this and i can't believe i didn't think about it until just now is that the best way to describe jed mckay's moon knight is almost like a giant mark moon knight born again story that's what it feels like it feels like a like born again but for moon knight and also like he has a support system as opposed to matt who just self-destructs every five issues <laughs> So there you go, guys. That's my glowing recommendation for Moon Knight. If you've read this run, let me know in the comments below what you guys thought of it. Other than that, hope y'all enjoyed this. I'm Mr. Multiverse. I'll see you next time. Multiverse.